happen live in like one second. Let's we do are it. live. Yay. Miri. Hello, Mel. Miri Leshampelli. Um, you are, you are uh, the first author illustrator that uh, is appearing on my show. Oh. And, uh, and beyond my, um, my admiration for you as a human being and your work, uh, this is a special occasion this week. Yes, I'm celebrating uh, a new book. I can show you. Okay. And again, a plain piece of paper. But we, before we start, mm -hmm. we are going to show the jingle of the show because I keep forgetting to show the jingle. We have to show the jingle. Otherwise, why did I spend so much money and effort making the jingle? So we're going to do the jingle. Then we'll come back in one second. Okay. Are you ready? Ready for the jingle? I'm ready. Or we'll sweep you off your feet. We move, we groove, you got me. Ease your legs, rest a while, all you gotta do is smile. We're swell, can't you tell you that, Mel? When the show begins, you better hold on real tight. Or before you know it, you'll be high as a kite. Take a break, settle down, we're the only show in town. SRO, don't you know you got Mel? Give it up, don't think twice, we're a hurricane on ice. What the hell, give a yell, ring your bell, show and tell. Mademoiselle, give a smell, you got Mel. No. You got and Mel has Mili Leshem Penny. Okay, now that we've done that, I want you to tell me everything about your new book, about your life, how you grew up to be an author illustrator. And uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna say this to you, you don't have to. Your new book is published this week. Yes. On a Philomel Penguin Random House which is like the top of the top of the top. And uh, this is, you know, forget about the Lionel Messi. You are the real Barcelona this week. <laughs> so show us your book again. Okay. Say a few words about it. Okay. So this is the new book. It, the name is Penny and the Plain Piece of Paper. Lots of and people. Yes, lots of people. Yeah, intentional. And um, it is about this little doodle girl called Penny. And she lives on her plain piece of paper. And she's complaining because there's nothing there. And she finds it very boring. And she wish she could live on another piece of paper with more interesting things on it. So, you know what she does? I know what she does because I have a big preview of the book. Lucky <laughs> me. Uh, I want you, uh, you can't show the whole book, can you? No. I want, I want you to show, can you just show one page for me? I'll show you, yeah. Okay, so. so uh, the newspaper page. Okay. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. So she goes out of the paper and into the newspaper. And you see the title, how it's called? It's called the Big, <laughs> big Deal News. And right. the, guy, the guy is the photograph. What's, who is he? Okay, so this guy is Mr. Important, and he lives in the big deal news, and he, uh, he does only very, very serious things, very important things, very big things, and uh, so Penny wants to have her photograph in the newspaper also, so she is asking for his permission and she said that she wants to pose for photos. So he tells her what she needs to do if she wants to appear in a, this, uh, you know, very serious uh, newspaper. She has to stand up straight and, you know, and she is standing like 
this. <laughs> and he's shocked. He's never seen somebody making fun of his serious newspapers. So he tells her that she cannot do that. And she has to leave and go elsewhere. And that's how the whole story goes, where she moves from one paper to another. And she discover, she discovers just like she's discovered here that there are rules everywhere has, uh, every place has its own rules, what you can and cannot do. And sometimes she doesn't fit into these rules or she doesn't like them. And that's why she keeps on moving and searching for the place where she really belongs. She finds so, it. Um, I want to. I want to say something. I mean, beyond my admiration for you as a as a person uh, and as a um, an artist, uh, this is a uh, as close to a perfect book as I can as I can imagine. <laughs> if I, if I were in a bookstore in London or New York. Um, and it didn't have your name, I would still buy it with great pleasure. Um, and um, I, I, I really hope it'll be a huge bestseller because it, it, it brings out all of the best in your, in your writing and, 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 your, and your drawing, which includes your, your ability to go out of the page. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and to become one of the characters in, in your own books as the illustrator. Uh -huh. This is something that I really love. Um, I always love to, you know, to play with my imagination. And when I'm creating a character, for me, she, she or he, they are alive. They are real. And, um, so I love to play with that concept of how much is something real or imaginary. And especially I think for kids, when they read a book, everything is very real there. For them, the character of the book many times becomes their best friend and they feel uh, the things that this character is going through. So um, this is one of the things that uh, interested me and that I explored in this uh, book and also in my previous book, which it has... Uh, Your previous book, really, is yeah. like... A, it's like a... How do you say in English? It's like the, the jumping board to this one. Uh, your, your previous book is lovely and it's wonderful, but this is a masterpiece in, in, my, in my estimation. And everybody should buy at least cop one copy, and, and I will as well, of course. Uh, maybe several, uh, because I have grandchildren. Um, and it, it's, it's very exciting. Uh, and, um, and I think now is a good time to talk about where you come from. Okay. Uh, before you give some tips to aspiring authors like me, um, mm -hmm which you do very generously and very freely. And you're also the head of the SCBWI in Israel. And mm -hmm. that's how I know you. And you're always ready to share all of your wonderful advice. So how did this all begin? OK, so um, many years ago, I'm not going to say exactly how many, uh, but I started uh, working on my first uh, book I first started as an illustrator. I live in Israel and I let me help you. Um, I want you to start at the very beginning mm -hmm. where you were born, uh, okay. what your parents uh, what their occupation. Okay. Okay, so I grew up in a, a city called Cholon near Tel Aviv um, in Israel and I, in my house, um, my parents all were very, very open to, um, to art and to literature and to culture, you know, um, music 
and uh, I, I also I played piano uh, for 12 years I learned uh, and I uh, always loved to go to plays and and to the cinema and um, to read many many books this is something that I did ever since uh, you know I remember myself and also drawing was something that I loved as a kid okay but as a four-year-old mm -hmm. uh, what, what were your favorite uh, children's books growing up that your parents read to you um well my favorite character was Billy B it's Pippi in uh, English uh, Bilby was my role model, not just my favorite character. In the age of five, uh, on Purim, when we, this is the holiday when we put on costumes, I was dressed up as Bilby. And I always admired her for being so courageous and strong and she, independent, and she doesn't need any grown ups around her. Um, and she's funny and she's silly. So I was very much uh, drawn uh, uh, into her character. And um, I loved adventure books um, and I loved uh, rhyming uh, poetry for kids. And also my mother, uh, she always, uh, she, she loved art and even studied art. And she was very, very, uh, she, she was choosing very carefully, uh, very good illustrated books for me. So I was growing up over, uh, with many beautiful, beautifully illustrated books. And I noticed that and I loved the, and the illustrations and to go into, you know, every little detail and um, and uh, I, in, in first grade, you know, when we just, when I just learned how to write, I already started to write and illustrate <laughs> my own uh, little uh, stories. And uh, so this is something. Do you have any of those things that you wrote as a young girl? If I have them with me? Yeah. Uh, I have them. Mm, I just don't someday, know if I can. Someday we have to publish them. <laughs> so there are some very nice things there. I, I show them when I go to school visits and I meet with the young kids. No, I, I show I, them. I won't, I, won't publish them. I won't pay you as much as Philo Mel. <laughs> yes. So. And you uh, also, yeah, sorry. You also grew up in Holon, uh, mm -hmm. and, um, and my favorite uh, children's poet, Shlomit Cohen Asif, is also from Holon. Who? Oh. Shlomit Cohen Asif. Oh, yes. Oh, I love her so much. So you, Holon has a great tradition of <laughs> children's parks and children's poets, and uh, she's like also a poet laureate of, uh, of Holon. Um, so you come from a very good place, mm -hmm. and as uh, so you started to, so we're going to publish your young children's books, and uh, and when when did you decide this is what I'm going to be? This is me. Um, well, I I you know my mother was very um, organized, and uh, she kept most of my uh, writings and. Uh, uh, drawings. So uh, a few years ago, I found uh, a box. It was like finding a treasure with many notebooks uh, wow. filled with stories that I wrote uh, during the elementary school. And there was one notebook uh, that on the first page, I wrote a little introduction telling about myself. And I wrote there that my name is Mary and I'm nine years old. And I wrote there that, um, that my dream, I don't even think I, I wrote a dream. I think I 
what I know like, I'm going to do when I grow up, I'm going to be an author. And I, but I didn't remember that, that this was my dream at age nine. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I discovered it like many years later, but um, I wasn't sure what I'm going to do. And uh, after the military service, I went to study art because this was my passion. So, art or design? Uh, art, art? Yes. Like Where did you study art? Painting. Uh, in a, a school that now it no longer exists. It's called Maimad in uh, Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. a school for the arts. So I was just uh, learning how to paint. And um, I wasn't sure where would I take it exactly, but um, but on, I think, the third year of my studies there, I was starting to think about illustration. And during the studies, I already started to illustrate books and by other people. I didn't think to write myself. Uh, so I why, why, was, why was that? This is something that I'm going to ask every uh, illustrator, every editor, why not write your own stuff? Why not illustrate your own stuff? I I think I was intimidated by it. Like an author seemed to be like something really huge, and I, not me, you know. Um, even though I was writing so many years as a as a hobby, yeah. but um, I didn't think that I could write a book. But uh, since I studied art and I felt that this is something I do well, I decided to start illustrating books. But the thing was that the first books that I illustrated were self-published books and they were not very, very good, <laughs> very well written. Okay. So I, took them because I thought it would give me some experience. But working on these books, on the first two books, it was just frustrating because the text was not good. But so did you tell, did you tell the author, you know, your, your text isn't really that good? No, no, I, I, no, I didn't tell them. Uh, I was very young and very eager to start and, um, you know, I uh, just thought to myself that I'm not enjoying as much as I could because if it was a good story, I would be so much more into it. And then I thought, if they are published, why can't I write books? I know I can write better than these books. And uh, that's when I started to think about my first book uh, that I will write and illustrate. And then I thought, okay, I thought as an illustrator, like what would be the most exciting project for me to illustrate, like my dream text. And I knew immediately that it would be something about nature because I love, I love, I love nature. So I thought, hey, why don't I write some nature book and illustrate it? And then the illustrator within me would be so excited that I have some text that I really enjoy illustrating. And that's how my first book uh, came to be. So it was my, I had a concept that I'm going to be, to do a flower uh, guide for children. And I'm going to have a little tiny like dwarf 
someone really, really tiny, but he is a nature professor. And he's going to go inside the flowers and tell the kids. Pro professor Pupitzdor or something. To, in Hebrew, it's Professor Pitzponteva, which yeah. means like tiny nature. I can show you the first book. It's right here. This is this it. This is the first book that you wrote and illustrated yourself. Yes, that's exactly. And, 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 and uh, how was it published? Okay, so the first, uh, when I had just the concept, I did three spreads with full illustrations and the text. And Can you show I, us one? Can you show us one of the spreads? Like from inside? Yeah. Uh, I don't have the original right here, but yeah. This is one of the first one, uh, illustrations that I did. Wow. And uh, and uh, and then I uh, I I decided to show it. Here's another one. Mm -hmm. I decided to to take it to the uh, Society for uh, Protection of Nature, the Society of Nature Protection in Israel, and to see if they are interested in this project. And I had a meeting there and they really loved the concept, but they said that they are not a publishing house. And they said that usually when they collaborate with a publishing house for uh, their project, they go to the Ministry of Defense publishing house. And they said that they are willing to help me scientifically, like to give me someone that will be the um, advisor, like science advisor. A, a, real, a real professor. Yeah, exactly. And they uh, gave me uh, Azaria Alon, which is really one ah. of the, the highest, as, as high as you can get in Israel. And, um, and he worked with me and I went to the, um, the Ministry of Defense in Israel, which is really funny. Um, they have, they had a publishing house. It's, it doesn't exist anymore, but uh, I went there and I told them about the project and they told me that they never did children books before, but they were willing to consider. And um, eventually they decided to take it. And uh, that's how the first book got published. And it was a huge success right from the start. It sold out the first um, print in like two months and okay. they went to the second print and it, it already it, and it is still until today it still sells it's I think 10 or 11 edition so uh, it becomes kind of a classics in Israel uh, and uh, followed by uh, six more so it's a series now of seven books with this uh, tiny professor um, and at the, at the same time, you were publishing, you were illustrating for other writers at the same yes. time. Yes, I, uh, I, yes. During the years, I did uh, 16 books as an illustrator for other authors, but I stopped accepting every uh, manuscript. I started to choose. I, did you start I, working with traditional publishers? Both. I, I, I also did some self-publishing, um, self-published books, but only if I really loved them and really thought they were a good story. I decided I will not take any more uh, uh, just a story that isn't professional and uh, good enough. So, uh, so during the years, I just started to do this two things, uh, writing my own books and illustrating for others. But uh, the thing was that I realized that illustrating for others takes 
a lot of my time and energy, a lot. And uh, usually I put them uh, up front and my own projects are waiting in line because uh, they are paying me, you know, they're paying me money to illustrate for them and they have deadlines and I'm, I feel committed. So I usually do that. And uh, there was a time that I really had a lot of work uh, as an illustrator and I was waiting. I said, okay, when I finish this project and each project takes me several months. Yeah. So I was waiting for this to end so I can go back to my own writing. But uh, in the meantime, another project uh, entered. So I, it just didn't stop. And, and, and Miri, um, first of all, it, it's fair to say that most illustrators uh, have trouble finding books to illustrate at all. <laughs> And uh, if, if we're frank, there's a lot of illustrators that don't have books to illustrate. Uh, and even when you get a book to illustrate, uh, you don't make that much money uh, in Israel. Uh, Me too. Me too. It wasn't much money. I know. So let's say even if you get, I don't know, a thousand shekel for a double spread or it, it's like $300. And um, you have to work so hard to illustrate one double spread. Uh, do yeah. people know this? That um, you know how long it takes an illustrator to make a really good book, and how little they get paid, even when they get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really really sad because um, yeah, I also maybe it depends on the technique that you are using. Uh, I always. Uh, draw manually with I lately I also use digital uh, uh, illustration but um, you but most of the books that I did were hand drawn and with lots of little details and lots lot of work it just cannot and, and, and as an illustrator even you know a, to be frank the illustrations are more important than the story, and um, and the illustrator uh, doesn't doesn't get royalties unless he or she is the author. So you get a one-time payment, which is not a lot of money. You mm -hmm. give them all of the rights, and uh, and this is and this is something very sad. So now let's talk about America, where okay. you can get paid ten to twenty thousand dollars up front for mm -hmm. a uh, for a manuscript. And I hope you got paid more than twenty thousand dollars, and that's already a certain amount of money. And uh -huh. uh, in America, the um, illustration of children's books is a very respectable uh, uh, profession. Uh -huh. And um, so, you, like I said, you're like playing for Barcelona now. Uh -huh. So how did how did how did that happen? How did an Israeli uh, break through into the highest level? Of writing and illustrating for children in the world. So, so first of all, um, the I, I wasn't even thinking about something like that, like breaking into the American market. It didn't even come to my mind. But uh, when I heard about SCBWI, the Society for Children Book Writers and Illustrators, and I. I got to know them, the group in Israel. I saw, I met there uh, an illustrator that was an American who uh, moved to Israel, who made Aliyah. So he's Israeli, but he has a background as an American and he continued to work with American publishers. And he told me about how much money he is making when he had, he got a uh, to work with a very big house, and it was uh, so much money. It, it was something like uh, equals uh, 10 books that I was illustrating in Israel. When I heard that, I said, oh my God, like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing here? Uh, and uh, 
And that's when I started to think about it. Like, why can't I just illustrate for the American market? And later on, I started to think, why can't I just also write and illustrate and create my own books and uh, try to get them published in America? But I had no idea how can it be done, if it could be done, because I'm Israeli, I speak Hebrew, uh, I know the Israeli book market. I didn't know anything about the book market of uh, America, and it's really very, very different in lots of ways. So, um, so you know, the SAPWI was really the bridge for me because uh, oh, as a member and later as a volunteer and now I'm the regional advisor and I started to be more and more involved because I realized how much I can get in this organization and how much I learn about the American market and about, you know, in general, how to write better books and how um, what do I do with them? How do I submit them? All those things I learned there. And I decided to take it very, very seriously. Um, and I uh, flew to, to the US three times for their annual conferences. In, in New York or Los Angeles? Uh, uh, both. Uh, to, twice I was in uh, New York and one time I was in the LA. Uh, uh, conference, which was absolutely incredible, maybe even better than the New York, uh, but all of them were really, really just eye-opening, and I learned a lot, and I made connections, and I started to get to know, uh, how, you know, just to really understand what I could accomplish and how much I can get better. That's the first thing. And then how to submit and how, what to do with my stories. And I also- You once told me that you queried 50 or 70 different agents, one after the other. No, 80. 80? <laughs> yes, yes. So, so yeah, so the, the first thing that I realized is that I want to have an agent that this was the right, uh, the best way to get into the American market, especially if you're foreign. But, but I think for everyone that wants to be in the American book market, they need an agent because an agent can open many more doors for you uh, than you could alone. And they could negotiate better and everything. But first of all, okay, they, they, out, of the, out of the 80 agents, if you query, yeah. okay. and and you're a, you're an author illustrator, which gives you much better chance than somebody like me who just writes. Uh, how many uh, how many of the agents uh, said yes, or wanted to speak to you? Yeah. So, so first of all, uh, most of them never even answered, didn't send any reply. Most agents when they want to say no, they just, you know, I call it the silent no. They don't say anything. But, but, but maybe there's a reason for this. Yes, of course, um, because they, they are flooded. They, are, they get so each, many. Reasons. Agent receives thousands. Like, no, I, like, I, many thousands of, of, of query letters a year. Uh, yeah. And maybe they take five, seven new people a year uh -huh. and so your chances are one in one in a thousand at best uh so of these 80 agents most didn't answer you yes which is and, the uh, situation <laughs> i want to uh, answer me after two and a half years it was a no but you know i was so happy to get a no after 30 months <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with a very nice note. So what happened? Yes, yeah, so so then I started to get uh, rejections. And as you said, I, I too, I, I was 
happy just to get something. So, <laughs> yay! I'm getting a no. Like somebody is uh, actually, you know, uh, replying me. Um, now, I, when I was sending the submissions, I did not send the manuscript because I prepared a dummy with the sketches and the text together because if you read uh, the story only as text, it didn't make sense. So, and uh, most agents don't allow any, um, any attachments to the email. So I couldn't so you just sent the, you sent the query letter with the synopsis? Uh, yes, and I asked them for permission to send them a PDF with the full uh, dummy. And 12 out of the 80, 12 requested to see the dummy. Wow, and you were querying which story? Uh, Scribble and Otter, which okay. is this. Okay, everybody. A wonderful book. So this was the uh, so twelve got the um, the full uh, manuscript with the sketches, and three out of them said yes. So I was actually in a position where I could choose, which was crazy, and um, I spoke with the three on the phone. And it was like I'm interviewing them all of a sudden. And uh, yes, and then, and then I, I chose the, the one that uh, I thought was best, <clears throat> best for me and uh, most experienced. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and uh, you can your name, Anna. Anna Olswanger. Yes. And, 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 and she, she's, she's done an incredible job with you. <laughs> yes, yes. And we are uh, like, we are, uh, until now, we are emailing daily. We are working all the time on more and more and more stories. And she's uh, a bit like an editor, not just an agent, because she's help me, helping me to revise uh, my stories and make them better and make them submission ready, uh, yes. and if she likes them. Yes. Uh, most, most of the books that I'm writing, she's rejecting. So, so even until now, you should know, they never ends. It never ends. It's not like, okay, I have an agent, now anything that I'm going to write is going to get published. It's not that. No, of course. It, um, but um, so what I wanted to ask you is, have you ever shared your successful, because this is a, a query letter that should be in a frame on a wall of every aspiring <laughs> writer. Have, have you shared that query letter? I would certainly like to have a look at it. No, I, I didn't share it. Um, it's an idea. That's I don't true. mind sharing it and uh, letting people uh, be inspired and get ideas. I worked very hard on this. Uh, I know because you work very hard on everything. Yes. So, but, but, you know, um, I teach my students, I teach uh, other subjects uh, to my students, but in order to succeed uh, in anything, you know, uh, you need to be one out of 1,000, one out of 5,000. It doesn't matter whether it's a book, it's a song, it's a, an invention. Uh -huh. it, it's the same thing. So you have to be as wonderful as you can and, and just, you know, send it to 80 people. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I really believe that you need to do um, just everything. Like do the extra. Uh, if you want to have uh, an advantage uh, you know, from all, all the many thousands that want to get published, then you need to work harder and do just more. Uh, and, uh, you know, not look for the shortcuts and what, uh, how can I do it quickly and how can I do it, uh, you know, um, 
just uh, you told me that you researched every agent. Right. I, I on only on the list of agents to make the list of the 80 agents that I'm going to submit to, I worked for two months because I I uh, researched each and every one of them. I checked their website. I looked for other books that were published by them or any info that I could have. And I also read very carefully their submission guidelines because many agents have different uh, guidelines for how to submit to them. And I wanted to do my homework very carefully and uh, to show them that I'm serious and doing exactly what they asked me to do. So only that took me a lot of time. So, 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 so just the sending was easy, you know. We're, we're unfortunately uh, towards the end of our wonderful interview. If 40 okay. minutes have passed like this, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to ask you <clears throat> uh, during the course of the year to, uh, to be a, um, invited guest when I teach students about success <laughs> okay. because you know you're much more than just a an internationally uh, acclaimed writer illustrator you're also a person who can teach uh, how not to give up and how to persevere exactly. and, and how to find your own your own page yes <laughs> uh, and um, I just I, I want to sign off with the with story you know you gave me a sneak peek at your new book, um, and um, I never seen it before. But I'm now going to use it as a comp. Okay. When I, when I send out, I'm going to say, "Hey, you know, uh, people who love uh, Mini Lesson Kelly's new book are going to love mine. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll get lucky too." <laughs> right. <laughs> I wish so, you the best of luck. Well, I am, I, I'm, I'm very lucky that this show has been about you, and um, I don't have an agent yet, but you know, the thing is that um, not having an agent is, is okay, because in the past years since we met, and since I went to CBWI, and since I've been working so hard, my stories just get better. And, you know, if you keep working, your stories get better. Your letters to the agents get better, and then your stories get better, and then you get rejected, and then once in three years somebody says something to you. You know, why don't you make the main character Jewish instead of a um, Hindu? And, um, and 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 something might happen or might not. But what I learned from you, and I learned this years ago, is to keep your eye on hard work mm -hmm. and total constant improvement. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and I, I think that everybody watching the show um, has learned this today. And uh, you deserve a huge chapeau. And uh, I, I can't wait for this uh, book to be published in many languages and to be a, a huge international success. Uh, and, uh, and Miri, for you to go on and on uh, and uh, conquer the world with your, uh, with your charm and, uh, and wit. Wow. Thank you so much, Mel, for all the compliments. No, I, I'm, I, I'm really, I feel honored to, to know somebody <laughs> like you. Thank you. Truly. So uh, be well, um, keep safe, and continue to, uh, to master your art. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.